Hey guys, um, I've been wanting to broach this subject for a while, I'm just getting around to it now, but I wanted to speak about book value, because I know that for a number of people who do serious fundamental analysis on stocks, one of the things that they look at very heavily is book value. So I wanted to speak a little about some of the things that I've discovered with book value. Um, and the reason I have Signature Bank up is because I'm going to use them as an example to demonstrate my point. There are two things that I've noticed that affect stock prices overall. There are a number of things that can affect them indirectly, but there's two things that affect stock prices directly. That's buying and selling. If there are more people buying a stock than selling it, the stock price is going to go up. And if there are more people selling a stock than buying it, the stock price is going to go down. Now, for those who are watching this video and aren't familiar, what book value should tell you is how much money is available for your shares of stock if something tragic should happen with the company it was to suddenly close or whatever the case is. So, um... Here we're looking at Signature Bank. The current price at the time was $109.56. If the book value was $10, that means if the company was to suddenly close, they only have $10 to pay you for each share. But if the book value was $130, that means you're good. That means if the company were to suddenly close, they have enough to pay you for each share. That's concerned me for a while. And the reason is because if a company suddenly closes, or starts running into trouble and has to close, what's going to happen? As soon as word gets out that this company is in trouble, what are people going to start doing? They're going to start selling shares of stock. And what's going to happen when they sell those shares of stock? The price is going to go down. So, at the time, this screenshot is from analysis I did on a company called Signature Bank. It was March 2nd of 2023. As you see, the shares were $109.56 a share. They had a 5.35 PE ratio and um, 20.46 earnings per share. So let's move down a little bit more. If we look at their income statement, it was pretty decent. They were they made from 2018 1.7 billion to 2022 3.7 billion. On the regular, they were making well in 2018, 19, and 20. They made in sort of the high 20s in terms of a profit margin. And in 2021 and 2022, in the high 30s, their balance sheet wasn't the greatest. But banks generally don't have great balance sheets because every bit of money that a bank can get its hand on, it's loaning out to collect interest. So banks generally don't have good balance sheets or great balance sheets. In four of the last five years, 
they paid a dividend. And they were buying back shares of their own, well, they bought back shares of their own stock for two of the, the previous five years. So, and their institutional ownership was 101%. Now look at their book value. Their book value was higher than their stock price. 128.61. All looking good, right? We said again this was March 2nd of 2023. So in any event, I'm hearing a little news a few days later. And I check it out. I go on Google to do a little more research. And what do I find? From March 2nd, 2023, this is eight days later, March 10th of 2023. Crypto bank signature slides on Friday amid, amid troubles at Silicon Valley Bank, Sil Silvergate. So, to summarize, there was a bank, Silicon Valley Bank that closed, and because um, Signature Bank was, I assume they were heavily involved in crypto, when Silicon Valley Bank closed, the people who had their money in Signature Bank got spooked. They all went to get their money out. Now, this is a matter of eight days. So what happened? Signature Bank's stock started to slide, 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 until eventually it hit $70, and the market paused it at $70. The market said, okay, no, you couldn't buy yourself Signature Bank for a few more days. It paused at $70 for a few days. Then they relieved, they lifted the pause. You were able to buy and sell Signature again. Okay. This is Signature Valley Bank today. Now we're speaking about the same year. This was back in October or I'm sorry, back in March of 23. Now we're in November of 23, November 24th, 2023. Okay. Look at Signature Bank. Below one cents. One cents would be 0 0.01. This is three decimal places. 0 0.003. So Signature Bank right now is below one cents. And let's go down to the statistics in Yahoo Finance. And when we go to the statistics and we look at book value per share, which is highlighted here, what is it? 128.61. It's still telling you your money is safe. The stock is actually less than a penny now. But the statistics, because of the book value, are actually telling you your money is safe. Now, I do consider, I shouldn't say I consider book value, when I'm doing my analysis, I want to look and see if it's a negative book value. If it's a negative book value, negative $5 or whatever, then I don't want to mess with it. But with the exception of that, the thing that I want to look at is that a company makes money in three ways. 
One way a company can bring in money is by sales and revenue. What do they do for a living? If they sell a certain product, how much are they making each year by selling that product? That is the one way that I want to see a company making money. The other two ways that a company can make money is they can just borrow it. They can keep borrowing and borrowing and borrowing, and that's how they're bringing in money. It may be a company that's losing money every year, but they're borrowing money every year to keep afloat. I don't want to see a company staying afloat by borrowing money. I don't mind borrowing money for a legitimate reason, but I don't want to see you borrowing money to stay afloat. The other way a company can make money is by selling more shares of stock every year or diluting their shares, diluting your shares. That's another thing I don't want to see. I want to see them buying back their own shares every year. That makes the stock price go up. I want to see them, even if their book value is low, even if it's a $128 company, but their book value is $5, but they're buying back shares every year, that's a company that I'm not going to let the book value deter me from buying. What I what will deter me from buying is if I see them selling more shares every year. But if they're buying back more shares every year, I'm okay with that. Even if they sold more shares one year but maybe bought back more shares for four years, I could be okay with that. So book value, it's a factor. I just don't feel it's a factor as much as people think. I believe it gives you a false sense of security. If a stock, if people are selling a stock, it's going to drop no matter what the book value is. But if I see a company buying back shares of their stock every year, that's a positive sign as far as I'm concerned. So just um, giving my perspective on this subject, guys. Anyway, this is Dwayne. Look forward to seeing you in the next video.